Hi, I'm Christine Pilata, and this is my oldest sister, Carla Pilata, and we're the owners of Mebo Restaurant. Today we're going to make an Italian specialty item. Uh, it's called Pizza Gaina, and it is made once a year at Easter time. Uh, it's traditional, and um, you can ask my mother the rest of the year to make it for you, and she won't. So uh, part of this dish is, um, it's an old, old dish. It's a little expensive. But uh, it takes a little time to make, a little time consuming, but it's easy and it's, you'll get a lot of pleasure out of it. So first we're going to start you off with the dough. Um, I have two pounds of flour, it's just all-purpose flour, and um, I'm going to make it in a well. I don't do this in a bowl, so, just so you know. So just make a well with your hands, okay? And I'm going to add... Um, some bacon powder and little black pepper, just a little, and some nice oil, um, just a little oil. That helps make the bread, I'm sorry, the crust smooth. Pizza Gaina is a um, pie. Basically a pie, it's a meat pie with ragatha cheese and eggs in it, um, some cold cuts. We'll tell you about that as we do the filling. So, oh, I'm gonna put about um, seven eggs in this right now. And we're gonna start to mix it. I'm gonna add the eggs in one by one and we're gonna use our hands. Wash your hands before you start. And we're just going to keep on adding the flour into the eggs and blending them. It's kind of like playing with Play-Doh. Have a lot of fun with it. So the first thing is to incorporate the eggs. Once we get the eggs incorporated, we're going to start adding a little water. Little by little. Oh, I almost lost that one. <laughs> Squeeze it together. And I'm going to start adding a little water. I have about um, eight ounces of warm water. And just add a little at a time until you get a feel of what it's doing. And you just have to keep on working this in until it f forms a ball. And it really is just a matter of keep failing it, adding, failing, adding. There's no complete rule of thumb here. So now that I'm done um, making the dough, I'm going to let this sit here for a while, and uh, Christine's going to make the filling for us. Okay, we're going to start with some fresh ragatha cheese. We make ours homemade in-house, but you could just get a two-gallon container of nice quality ragatha. <laughs> Actually, two pounds. Two pounds. Oh, my Not God. two gallons. Two we'll gallons be feeding we'll feed in the neighborhood. The neighborhood. <laughs> okay. And then we have some what we call fresh cheese, and it comes in a basket, and it really only comes out once a year. And we um, Easter time. actually made about 10 phone calls around yesterday because we are two weeks early and this, was, this whole thing almost never happened today. <laughs> so this is fresh cheese. It comes in a basket. You drain it. It has a lot of water in it. And that's just one pound. We like to put in about a fourth of a cup of Romano grated cheese. Pecorino Romano. We use prosciutto de parma only. The product, the better product you use, the better the flavor is going to be. I mean, people have their favorites. Some put salami in, some put pepperoni. We're strictly prosciutto de parma. We chop it up into small cubes. We did used to use the salami in it uh, years ago, but for some reason they stopped making it in the United States. I don't know if there was an ingredient that wasn't allowed anymore, but um, we make do. We make um, a supersada. We chop into small cubes. And then we have what is a boiled ham. And we actually use more of the boiled ham because the prosciutto and the supersada is very salty. On these dishes, do not any, add any salt in because there's already salt. And the uh, supersada has pepper in it, so you don't need to add pepper in it either. And then we add an additional seven eggs to start. Again, everything is by feel. And after that, if it's not moist enough, we just continue to add more eggs. So you and want to really start mixing it You need to get well. down and dirty and just have fun. And everything is just mixed together and blended. 
You want to make sure that you really mix the meats well so that different meats are, in, you know, spread evenly throughout the dish. The filling is so amazing that you really don't even have the desire to cook it, believe me. It is just incredible. Yeah, I know you're not supposed to eat raw eggs, but as uh, children, we ate spoonfuls of this before God inside the pizza gainer. Okay. So now that Christine's done mixing the filling, we're going to go back to the dough. What you want to do is divide your dough into two pieces, one for the top and one for the bottom of the pizza gainer. And um, you can use whatever kind of rolling pin is good for you. My father makes the rolling pins. They're made out of broom handles. They're shaved down, shellacked, and... That's what we use in our restaurant. We also make our hand cut pasta with this. We don't use a machine. So now I'm gonna roll it. It's a little time consuming. Uh, it gets a little easier, like I said, if you let it sit just a little. Excuse me. So, oops. I need to get these out of here, I'm sorry. And for some people, this is easier if you put it between two pieces of saran wrap. Um, and do it that way. Okay. It's just a matter of pushing. You need to use your weight. You need to lean into it and push on it. Now you know it's really going. You can hear the flipping of the dough. Doesn't have to be exactly round. As long as it fits. And you'll have some leftover dough, but that's okay. So we are using a, an enamel pan. If you can find one, uh, check some of the old Italian specialty shops. This is like my inheritance. We're fighting over the two enamel pans we have left. We lined it with some Crisco. Yep, and dusted it with flour. And just gonna drape it in all the way around the edges. And we're gonna cut this extra dough off just underneath the lip. You can probably get an extra pizza gainer out of the extra dough, <laughs> a little one. Okay, so now that that's all set, we're going to pour the filling inside to three quarters of the way full because this does rise and expand as you're doing it as it's baking. Believe it or not, it looks like it's a heavy dish, but it really isn't. So, I'm gonna drape top over, lay it down. Just pat it down a little. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna cut this edge off, and then we're gonna fold it over and um, you can use a fork to lock it in. So. Good. Well, the labor of love here. This is one dish that only Anna. very special people actually get. Okay. Good. Beautiful. Now, we're going to fold this over, Christina. And it's rustic. You just want to fold it over and lock it in. Doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be closed. And we're ready to go. Doesn't have to be even, doesn't have to be perfect, it is what it is. So the last thing you wanna do is poke four holes in it. Um, because these holes will let the steam through. About, what is it, an hour or two? We're gonna, we do we're gonna cook wash? it for 10 minutes, take it out of the oven, bake it for 10 minutes, take it out of the oven, beat an egg, brush the top with an egg, and put it back in for another hour. And that's it. So this is your final result. It's a pretty hefty pie. Okay. It doesn't take a lot to um, you know, fill your needs here, so it can go a long way. So as you can see, there's the baked cross on the top. And cut it. Ooh, can't wait. Good. Would you like the honors of the first piece? Absolutely. There you go. Oops. Sorry. Thanks for the extra bite. 